The cabin stood nestled within the dense woods, its rustic charm belying the sinister secrets it held. A group of us, Sarah, Mark, Emily, and I, had decided to escape the hustle of city life and embark on a weekend getaway to this remote haven. Laughter and excitement filled the air as we unpacked, eager to embrace the tranquility that nature promised. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that stretched like skeletal fingers, an unease settled over me. We gathered around the crackling fire, sharing stories and sipping on warm drinks, the flickering flames casting eerie shadows on our faces. The forest seemed to come alive with strange noises, rustling leaves, distant hoots of owls, and the howling wind that seemed to carry whispers of things unseen. The first disappearance happened on the second night. Emily was gone, leaving only a void in her place. Panic gripped us as we searched the cabin and its surroundings, our flashlights slicing through the inky darkness. But Emily had vanished without a trace, as if swallowed by the very woods themselves. Terror gripped our group as paranoia took root. We huddled together, questioning each noise, each movement in the shadows. Mark suggested that Emily might have wandered off, disoriented, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. As the days wore on, the sense of dread only deepened. Another night fell, and Mark was gone. Panic surged anew as we searched for him, our calls swallowed by the oppressive silence of the woods. It was then that I realized our group was dwindling, and the fears that one of us was responsible gnawed at my sanity. Sarah's eyes held a mixture of fear and accusation as we gathered around the fire. Someone is doing this, she whispered, her voice trembling. One of us is taking the others. I wanted to deny it, to believe that there was some logical explanation, but the truth was impossible to ignore. The remote cabin had become a prison, a claustrophobic cage that held our deepest fears. As the days turned to nights and the group grew smaller, paranoia reached a fever pitch. We slept in shifts, taking turns to keep watch, our eyes scanning the darkness for any signs of movement. The forest had become a labyrinth of dread, the trees swaying with a malevolent energy that seemed to feed on our fear. My sleep-deprived mind struggled to make sense of it all, to find a rational explanation for the horrors that surrounded us. But the truth was far more terrifying than I could have ever imagined. On the penultimate night, Sarah and I were the only ones left. We huddled by the fire, our nerves frayed and our spirits broken. The cabin's walls seemed to close in, the very air heavy with a sense of impending doom. Sarah's eyes met mine and I saw a mixture of desperation and accusation, a silent plea for salvation from the nightmare that had become our reality. And then, in the blink of an eye, she was gone. The fire crackled ominously, casting dancing shadows that seemed to mock my helplessness. My heart raced as I screamed her name, the sound reverberating through the stillness like a lament. With trembling hands, I reached for my flashlight, its weak beam piercing the suffocating darkness as I ventured outside. The forest was an abyss of terror, its gnarled trees seeming to whisper secrets that danced just out of reach. Every rustling leaf, every distant sound, sent chills down my spine as I stumbled forward, driven by a mixture of fear and determination. And then I saw it, a figure, hunched and distorted, lurking in the shadows. My heart pounded in my chest as I approached cautiously, my breath held in a mixture of dread and anticipation. And there, amidst the trees, I saw her, Emily. She was different, changed, her eyes vacant, her movements slow and deliberate. It was then that I understood the true horror that had unfolded. The colossal twist that sent shockwaves of terror through me. Emily? I called out, my voice trembling. She turned to me, her gaze empty yet filled with a malevolent intensity. And then, in a voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the abyss, she spoke, we were never alone. The realization hit me like a sledgehammer. Emily was there, yet she wasn't. She was the embodiment of the malevolent force that had plagued us, the threat that had lurked within our own group. 
Emily, or what remained of her, was a vessel, a puppet of the darkness that had consumed her. As her eerie laughter filled the air, the forest seemed to writhe with a sinister energy. Shadows twisted and contorted, the very earth pulsating with a malevolent rhythm. Emily's figure moved closer, her eyes glowing with an otherworldly fire. We were chosen, she hissed, her voice a haunting symphony of malice. Chosen to feed the darkness, to become vessels of its terror. The truth was devastatingly clear, our group had been selected, manipulated by forces beyond our comprehension. The cabin had been a trap, a macabre game orchestrated by an ancient malevolence that reveled in our fear and suffering. As Emily's form closed in on me, her laughter growing louder and more deranged, I realized that escape was impossible. The forest had become a hellish labyrinth, a realm of nightmares where the true enemy lay within. And as I faced the embodiment of the darkness that had ensnared us, I knew that I was destined to become its next vessel, forever trapped in a nightmare beyond imagination. The town of Hollowbrook was a place forgotten by time itself, its very name whispered in hushed tones of fear. As I stepped through its decayed gates, an oppressive sense of dread clung to the air like a suffocating shroud. Moonlight struggled to pierce the thick fog that draped the streets, casting an eerie glow on the dilapidated buildings that lined the path ahead. I could feel my heart racing, each beat echoing in the silence as if signaling my descent into a nightmare. The legend that led me here spoke of a vengeful ghost, a tortured soul named Lucinda, who was said to seek vengeance for an unspeakable injustice. Her story was one of betrayal and cruelty, accused of practicing dark magic, she had been hunted down by the very villagers she once called kin. Torn from her life, she was subjected to a gruesome execution, her anguished screams echoing through the ages. As I wandered deeper into the heart of Hollowbrook, shadows danced and twisted, forming grotesque shapes that seemed to reach out for me. Every rustle of leaves, every creak of a floorboard, sent shivers down my spine, as though the very fabric of the town was alive with unseen malevolence. I was drawn inexorably toward the looming mansion, its grandeur now a haunting relic of the past. The mansion's doors groaned open as I pushed them, revealing a darkness that seemed to swallow me whole. The air inside was thick with an unsettling chill, and the walls seemed to pulse with a palpable malevolence. I clutched my flashlight like a lifeline, its feeble beam struggling to penetrate the oppressive darkness that enveloped me. It wasn't long before I sensed a shift in the air, a presence that prickled in my skin. I turned, and there she stood, Lucinda's ghostly figure, draped in tattered rags, her eyes like twin orbs of burning hatred. My breath caught in my throat as her hollow gaze bore into me, as though peering into the darkest recesses of my soul. You seek the truth, her voice whispered, a chilling wind that sent a surge of terror through me. I nodded, my voice trembling. I want to know what happened to you, to uncover the truth. Lucinda's spectral form glided closer, the room growing even colder as her presence intensified. They accused me of crimes I did not commit, she hissed, her voice carrying a weight of centuries of suffering. And now, they shall pay. Her words resonated deep within me, and I was torn between empathy for her torment and the unrelenting fear that gripped me. But as Lucinda continued to speak, her story took a dark twist, plunging me deeper into a nightmarish abyss. There is a connection, she murmured, her tone turning sinister. A connection between you and those who condemned me. My heart raced as realization dawned upon me, a realization that transformed the narrative into something far more terrifying. Lucinda's eyes bore into mine, her ghostly visage twisting into a malevolent grin. You are kin, she hissed, the words striking like a thunderclap. Kin to those who sealed my fate. My flashlight slipped from my trembling fingers, its beam extinguishing as if snuffed out by the encroaching darkness. Panic surged within me as the room seemed to close in, the walls contracting with an otherworldly force. Lucinda's will crescendoed, a symphony of anguish that echoed through the very fabric of reality. You shall share their torment, she declared, her voice a cacophony of tormented souls. Bound by blood, bound by vengeance. 
I stumbled backward, my movements sluggish as though caught in a nightmare's grip. Desperation clawed at me as I fought against the spectral force that held me in place, my pulse pounding in my ears. Lucinda's ethereal form drew closer, her eyes glowing with an intensity that seared into my very soul. In that moment, I understood the true horror of my situation. The vengeful spirit seeking retribution was now tormenting me, the last person she would have expected to be entwined in the legacy of her betrayers. I was trapped in a nightmare not of my making, a cycle of suffering that transcended life and death. As Lucinda's wail reached a fevered pitch, the walls of the mansion seemed to warp and contort, the air itself pulsating with a malevolent energy. Darkness encroached from all sides, and I could feel its icy grip seeping into my very bones. In the midst of that surreal maelstrom, I realized that Lucinda's vengeance was no longer hers alone. It had become a force of its own, a consuming abyss that threatened to swallow me whole. The colossal twist was clear, the vengeful ghost had become a monstrous embodiment of rage and agony, and now, I was its unwitting vessel. The town of Hollowbrook, with its secrets and horrors, was poised to claim yet another victim, a victim consumed by the very spirit they had come to uncover. And as I was swallowed by the all-encompassing darkness, Lucinda's maniacal laughter echoed, a haunting requiem that marked the culmination of her revenge. My heart pounded with excitement as I stood at the doorstep of my new home, an old house surrounded by an aura of mystery. The sunlight barely penetrated the thick foliage, casting eerie shadows on the worn walls. Ignoring the chills that ran down my spine, I stepped inside, determined to embrace this new adventure. The house was filled with ancient relics, each one telling a story of its own. Among them stood an ornate mirror, its glass surface tinged with a faint glimmer of something otherworldly. Unaware of its ominous history, I hung it on my bedroom wall, unknowingly unlocking its hidden secrets. Night after night, I found myself plagued by restless dreams that felt too real to be mere figments of my imagination. In the depths of my slumber, I could sense a sinister presence watching me, its malevolence growing stronger with each passing night. Soon, the lines between dreams and reality blurred. I would wake up in unfamiliar places, my hands trembling with guilt over deeds I had no memory of committing. My peaceful existence was unraveling and I could feel myself slipping away into a terrifying abyss. The townspeople, unnerved by the strange occurrences that followed my arrival, grew suspicious of me. Whispers of a cursed mirror and its dark powers circulated among them, and I became a subject of fear and suspicion. Desperate for answers, I sought the help of a local historian, Mr. Edmonds, who had an unparalleled knowledge of the town's history. He listened attentively to my tale, his face a mix of concern and recognition. With a heavy sigh, he began recounting the legend of the haunted mirror. Centuries ago, the mirror had been crafted by a malevolent sorcerer to trap the spirits of those he had wronged. The sorcerer's wickedness knew no bounds, and he reveled in the torment of the trapped souls. However, his reign of terror came to an end when a brave young woman confronted him and shattered the mirror, releasing the vengeful spirits. As Mr. Edmonds spoke, the pieces fell into place, and a horrifying realization dawned upon me. I was not the unwitting victim of spirits unleashed by the mirror, instead, I was the reincarnation of that brave woman from long ago. The spirits had returned to enact their revenge on the one who had defeated them centuries ago, me. Determined to break free from their malevolent grasp once more, I delved deep into the annals of history to uncover the truth of my past life. Guided by Mr. Edmund's wisdom, I confronted the darkness that lingered within my own soul, embracing the courage and strength that had defined my previous existence. With newfound resolve, I faced the spirits head-on, challenging their hatred and offering them the chance to find peace and forgiveness. As the echoes of reflection resonated within me, I extended a hand of understanding to the tormented souls, revealing the truth of their eternal suffering. In a colossal twist of fate, the spirit's malevolence dissolved, and they found solace in the forgiveness they had long sought. The cursed mirror lost its eerie glow, now a mere reflection of my own transformation. 
The town was witness to the astonishing change that came over me, but they remained unaware of the truth. The haunted mirror was not the source of terror, it was a catalyst for redemption. Embracing my new role, I vowed to protect the mirror, not as a prison for vengeful spirits, but as a reminder of the power of forgiveness and the resilience of the human spirit. As the echoes of reflection faded, the town embraced me once more, this time with admiration and gratitude for the young woman who had triumphed over the darkness within and without.